Good morning, Warriors. We're back with another episode of our morning talk. I'm not always calling it morning talk, but I, you know I'm talking about when I hit the date on there and everything. So I hope you guys are doing well today. This is a great day. We are on, uh, I believe, this is March. Uh, let's see, yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, 17th. So this has got to be March 18th. I lose track of the day sometimes. And uh, what are we at? 652 days, no no FAP, and then 177, I think it is, yes, of monk mode. How are we doing? We're doing fine. Everything is going well. Uh, I'm going to focus on a question from Dax. Thank you, Dax. Shout out to you. Uh, I try to get to some of the past ones as well. Uh, I just look at the ones I see recently, and I know he sent me something last night, so I'm going to kind of focus on it for our morning discussion. So please go ahead and um, like, I forget, like, comment. Uh, I keep forgetting this kind of stuff. Like, comment, uh, donate, subscribe, do all those things, and I appreciate that. So thank you so much. So our discussion topic today, talking about uh, past emotional traumas and situations, and I think he's asking, uh, I have to go back and look at the question, but I believe he's asking, um, Deck is saying, is it affecting you now? Uh, does it affect you? And the quick answer to that is yes. It does affect things that you do. Let me kind of go back a little bit from a psychological and communication standpoint since I've taught that for many years and I've kind of delved into research and I was at a point myself where I was depressed and, you know, lonely and I've been, you know, uh, down on myself a lot and those type of things. And a lot of those occurred because of past situations that maybe I didn't forgive myself for, I blamed myself for, things like that. We all go through those type of types of situations. And of course, if you live longer like I have, 60 some years, almost 61 coming up pretty soon, you're going to have a lot of these experiences, good and bad. And so I think that there's a lot of emotional types of ties you bring to things. I'll give it a good example. If you're um, listening to music and a song, all of a sudden that song goes plays on. You may remember a past relationships or a past event that you had. And those memories are all in your mind. Now, but remember, those are memories. And that's not something that's happened recently. It may have happened 10, 20, 30 40 years ago, right? Those things happen. Now, you may relive it sometimes in your mind because it's such a strong type of thing and you remember it, but it's something that is way in the past. And this is something to remember because it's all the same type of principle. It's all energy. It's all things that you create in your mind as a perception, good or bad. And some things you label as good and some people label as bad. Some people see one thing, they label it as good. Another person sees the same thing and they label it bad. Because their experiences to it comes back their perception. We are a lot of times a, um, a result of our circumstances. What's happened to us as we were born, as we go through life, those things kind of create our emotional stability, things like that. Now, can it change? Yes, of course it can make change. I think certainly it does change. People do work on those type of things as they get older and they experience things. And as time goes on, you know, you have to kind of let go of those emotions that are bad, especially negative ones. And so I think what ends up happening is that you create the same thing when it comes to losing your energy. You create those type of emotional connections when these things happen. And so it is hard to go back and uh, not let it affect you. I mean, you always are going to have times where you're going to go back and reflect, especially since I, I've had 45 years of that, go back to situations of why I did that. I did that a lot of times because I was lonely, depressed, all kinds of stuff, and I didn't have the in, inner fortitude to kind of say, no, I'm not going to do this. This is not healthy for me but I got sucked into the, the apple from the evil one saying this is a better life, that's the better life. And in fact, it's really the opposite. It was not the better life. It was a, uh, a worse life made things worse. And you fall more into, into the hole, into the pit of depression, anxiety, all those type of things because now you're becoming even weaker physically and mentally and spiritually. All those things lead to you becoming 
a weak type of person. So I think when you look at these type of things, you realize that every experience you have has a connection. And so as Deck is asking, the emotional connections, the turmoil, all the things you've had in your life, they do come back and affect you. That could be one of the reasons why you're losing energy. And this is one of the reasons why emotionally and physically you could be losing energy on things that you do. Because you have this emotional type of bond. And you can just sense it. If you listen to somebody and they're venting, you can see all the energy actually flow out of them, you know, flow right into you. And you're listening to them and you're basically, you know, kind of drawing all that energy from them to you. And those type of things, you know, they happen. You may not see it physically, but it happens. You can feel it. You can feel that thing. And that's why I always say there is more to life than just the, what you see in front of you. In fact, there's a lot more in life than that. Most of it, it's outside of that life. And it's kind of like the spiritual or kind of sense that you have that is not there, but something that is around you um, that's more on a spiritual end of it. So when you see that, you really kind of sense to yourself, oh, you know, these are the types of things that are important to look at and, uh, and to kind of see. So I think that um, you bring up a very good point, Dex. I think we not only battling the, the peer pressure of the current day, on the situations of well, we should go out and release and all those things. You're dealing with years now. Some of you are only in your 20s, so you're only de dealing with a few years. But some of us who are older, we're dealing with 10, 15, 20, in my case, 45 years of um, emotional types of rise back and forth, and that lead us to different types of things. And so you have to kind of go ahead and say, I am going to start anew. Those things are going to pop up. You have to know they're going to pop up. You know that you're going to hit emotional type of ties to things. Whether you see people in the past that you've had or you've seen pictures, they all remind you of things in the, as the past. I can still remember lots of things that pictures and things like that. I try to move on, and I think certainly keeping busy, getting your goals accomplished, doing the things and moving ahead with things that you're doing make a huge difference. But I think you also have to realize that you're going to experience those things. There are some things that are going to stay in top of your uh, memory and things that are going to be triggered by something that happens to you again. You're going to remember that memory from past. It's, it's unavoidable. Those things happen. But you can also prepare yourself as best as possible by keeping on your journey, keeping this as long as possible. You know, trying to stay as long as possible, continuing day by day. The more you do that, the stronger you get. And yeah, there's going to be times where temptation, past memories of temptation, all these things are going to come back to your life. They're going to come in. It's unavoidable, in my opinion. But you can try to do something about it by transmuting it. This could be in the middle of the night, right? The evil one could decide, oh, I'm going to test you now and uh, do that, or you can go ahead and kind of move to a different type of uh, transmuting it, the energy to a different type of goal and idea. Once again, I always have a plan before I go to bed. As I pray and meditate, I focus on three areas that I want to think about as I'm sleeping. Now, you know, other thoughts come into my mind, and there's sometimes you can't avoid that, but just like anything else, the repetitiveness, the habit of thinking this way, more times than not can kind of help you. And so I'm not going to have a lot of those type of situations where I have, um, you know, tempted, tempting ideas or things like that, even when I'm sleeping or when I'm cognizant, when I'm, when I'm aware of what's going on, something comes through to me. I always, as stronger I get, the more I'm able to say, okay, let's move this. Let's transmute this. Let's take some deep breaths, transmute this to something else. And all of a sudden you're okay. So I've gotten better with that. My certainly, you know, after 600 and some days, you are much stronger than I was on day 30 or 40. But it doesn't mean it's still not going to be present. It doesn't mean it's going to come back. And, and so those types of habits you can create, especially if you've done, you know, 45 years of this stuff, it's easy to kind of fall back into a pattern because you've set that pattern for many years. And this is where the emotional ties come in. The reason why it's hard to get away from past behaviors is because they're set with you. You've developed a habit with those. And the longer you've done this, the longer you've lost energy, the longer you've kind of been on these bad streaks, 
then the harder it is to kind of fight through that. And so that's why it took me a long time. Now I'm hoping, one of the reasons I'm hoping to kind of share this information is basically because you're able then to, I'm hoping as younger people, you're able to kind of see this now and say, okay, I'm gonna do something about this now in my 20s and not wait till I'm 57, you know, 58 years old to start doing this. I think that that's gonna help you a great deal. Uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, God has his own purpose and in mind. So, you know, that's kind of be up to you and your creator about how, when is this going to happen? I think that it probably was a good time for me to kind of set up. I, I, like I said, I, it's unbelievable to me the benefits and all the things that are, are happening at this point to myself. Um, and I, I attribute everything to going back to this journey. And I finally have decided to kind of come within peace of myself and stop all this, you know, tempting type behaviors that was leading me to uh, almost like self-destruction. So, uh, interesting, very interesting type of thing. But anyway, Deck, a good, great, great question, Deck. You know, and I appreciate that. Um, I think certainly when you talk about, you know, past, you know, past emotions, past thoughts, those things all contribute to who you are right now. And in the good and the bad, and the things you are, you know, blessed with, and the things you want to change, I think all those things are are in forward motion for you, and you can continue to move ahead and try to overcome the things you want to achieve. Now, I, I believe that having you know thoughts and and prayers and talking with your Creator every day, you kind of get more of a reading of where you should go. And there's going to be times you're going to be nervous, but I think this is when you lean on lean on your God, and appreciate the fact that you are, um, you know, you are making a difference. You know that you are doing something, and that you're going to continue to do that because everything that looks like from the outside is not what it appears to be. And I think if you listen to people, uh, especially with our news and health and these things, a lot of the what they're talking about, as is you know, I'm finding out as time goes on is really more for their self, self-gratification, self-promotion, self-profit, uh, you know? And I think this is what the, uh, the shame of this all is when you see this all and you realize what they're, most of these people are trying to do is sell products. And I think that you have to kind of be aware of that, get as much information as you can, but also go by your own experiences. I have never felt better over the last uh, year and a half now uh, then I felt, like I said, when I was 12, 13 years old. It's the last time I can remember this. And it's only because I didn't focus on uh, the women. I didn't focus on the girls. I didn't focus on anything uh, until I was 12, 13 years old. And then it was girls and women later as adults and things like that. You know, you get to the point where, you know, you're focusing so much on those behaviors that you're uh, not really, you're not really focusing on anything else. And I think that's really the shame of it all. And you have to kind of at some point decide, okay, you know, what is this really getting to me? It's really getting nothing, right? You're, you're looking at these pictures, doing all this kind of stuff. What is the what is the end goal? Why is it important for you to release? It becomes an addictive quality, and this is what happens, and, and this is what the problem of it is. So I think, Deck, you got a good question, but what your question is really kind of tied into the reason we all release is those emotions and things that are tied to the actual act. And once we let those go or put those in the back window, and they're gonna still be there, of course, but they're in the back window, so they're chasing you. You just have to make sure that you keep strong and keep on your purpose. So shout out to Dex, thanks a lot for a good question. You guys have a great day. Uh, I'll try to do one if I can this weekend. If I don't, I'll try to do something on Monday. You guys have a great weekend, and we'll talk soon. For those, battle on!